I can clearly remember when I first heard about Pan Am Railways. It was 2017 and I had just dived into the hobby of rail fanning. I was on board a westbound Amtrak down Easter train from Old Orchard Beach to Wells, Maine, riding in the Great Dome Car Ocean View. There was a group of young rail fans from Boston on board who were actually the first rail fans I ever encountered. I had no idea what railroad owned the tracks I was riding on, but I had seen a few CSX-8s roll through Old Orchard that day, so I asked a group of rail fans if CSX owned the tracks. They told me no, that it was Pan Am Railways. Well, I had never heard of Pan Am Railways, so I did some research and learned that Pan Am was basically just Guilford Rail System, which I knew very well as a railroad that bought and bankrupted my D&H. Isn't it funny how I guessed the rails in southern Maine were owned by CSX, and six years later, that's exactly the case. CSX took over Pan Am Railways over a year ago, but change is both gradual and sneaky. You never realize what you have until it's gone. Daylight runs, familiar symbols, and classic power all slowly fade away. While CSX took over, the Pan Am Southern west of Ayer saw very few changes, and business essentially continued as usual. It's now 2230 on August 31st, 2023. In one and a half hours, Pan Am Southern, the final remaining piece of Pan Am Railways, will be no longer. An important part of my early railfan days has now fallen, alongside the DNH Lightning Stripes, Canadian Pacific Railway, and many others. Genesee and Wyoming's newly established Berkshire and Eastern will be taking over the Pan Am Southern, jointly owned and operated by Norfolk Southern and CSX. As with other recent mergers, change won't happen overnight. Let's be honest, Pan Am Railways needed to go sooner or later. I honestly cannot name a single positive thing about the railroad other than being a colorful target for rail fans. With that being said, I'll always remember Pan Am as a good part of my childhood, despite being incredibly frustrating to film on most of my trips to the railroad. The biggest uncertainty for the new Berkshire and Eastern is the fragile Hoosick Tunnel. I certainly don't know how long the Hoosick will last, but I do know that its days are more numbered than most. As a journalist, both written and video, it's not my place to plan or predict. It's simply my job to document the here and now. I haven't covered every corner of the Pan Am system, 
but I'm content with what I have been able to document over the last few years. Let's take a look at a few of my favorite Pan Am memories, as the railroad we love to hate officially becomes a fallen flag. The first saved recording of a Pan Am train that I could find was Air to Portland train AYPO back in 2019. The funny thing is I never saw that train turn a wheel as it was tied down crewless on the Wells siding. However, I did catch a westbound downeaster passing the stopped freight. A year later, 2020, and I was watching 310 switch Rigby Yard. This was the first time I got a good look at a Pan Am operation, and would be the beginning of several trips to major hubs across the system. In July 2021, I was very fortunate to be able to visit Waterville, where my dad had work-related business. As we arrived in town, I found Waterville to Portland train WAPO building at the west end of the yard. This was a really cool and eerie experience, the first of several such nighttime encounters I would have with the railroad. The Waterville trip allowed me to catch a glimpse into the past of Pan Am, a time when Jeeps dominated the roster. I was able to watch a local crew switch during both of my mornings in town. During my first morning in Waterville, I got to witness eastbound train Savvy-4 working hard as they pulled towards Fairfield. Another great part of the Waterville trip was chasing Northern Main Junction to Waterville train NMWA.
On our final day in Waterville, I convinced my family to wait just a little bit longer for train Sappy Dash 3. It paid off as the lighting was simply perfect. On our usual family trip to Maine in 2021, the only freight I would catch would be Portland to East Deerfield train POED. This train actually caught fire in Saco and was quite delayed rolling through wells. My final Pan Am catch of the year was in September when I shot District 3 train EDRJ rolling down the Rotterdam branch towards the junction of that name. on the move. 2022 was the year that the CSX acquisition was approved and took effect. In April, actually on the same day the merger was approved, I found myself at East Deerfield Yard capturing a few movements of ED4, EDBF, and 16R. In August, it was time for our annual trip to Maine. CSX had begun taking over operations, but Pan Am still ruled the rails. I was surprisingly able to catch both EDPO and POED.
I caught my first look at the CSX takeover when M426, formerly AYPO, rolled into Wells with five CSX motors. A nighttime stop at Rigby Yard didn't result in very good video, but watching these Jeeps haul WAPO into the yard was an amazing experience. On our last day in Maine, I shot Dover-based local D01 running westbound from Rigby Yard. This would truly be the last Pan Am train I would see on District 2. Our final Pan Am catch of the year would be on the night before Thanksgiving, when we stumbled upon Mechanicville Local X01 delivering Hal Raven's equipment from the Batten Kill to CP. In 2023 saw the continued CSX takeover and eventually the Berkshire and Eastern startup. I would first shoot Pan Am this year in August with my trip to East Deerfield. Con River local EDSP would work the yard and eventually run south with a pair of Dash 8s. And that brings us up to now. Pan Am's legacy will continue to be visible across the former railroad, but Pan Am itself is entirely gone. I'm recording this less than 24 hours after this year's vacation in Maine, where I recorded a few more CSX trains. Yes, I'm calling them CSX now because it no longer feels like Pan Am. I thought surely locals would be the last holdout for Pan Am power, but here's LO77 former PO3 with a CSX Jeep at Rigby Yard. Yeah, 
As LO-77 arrived at the freshly painted Rigby Tower, I realized that this fascinating part of my life called Pan Am Railways was no longer. I'm not saying you were a good railroad, but that doesn't mean I won't miss you. Goodbye Pan Am, and here's to a brighter future for New England railroading.